name is Hajime Sugiyama, and I'm an industrial IoT evangelist from Mitsubishi Electric. Today, I would like to talk about saving energy and IoT. These are the UN SDGs. Everybody knows that you know, because of the rising population and because of the environment, damage to the environment, that we need to shake hands and work forward together to develop a sustainable society where everybody can live safely in the future. Of course, it's very important, and companies are putting a lot of effort into achieving these sustainable development goals. But it's going to be very important for your profit, for your bottom line as well. Meaning that in the future, I think there's going to be a lot of taxes from the governments based on the amount of garbage you give out, based on the amount of energy you give out. So if you use a lot of energy, they're going to tax you more. That's why in order to secure profit as a company, saving energy is going to become very vital for your companies. I think Japan has a very, very good culture surrounding saving energy. The reason, it's because Japan has no natural resources. We only have 6% of energy self-sufficiency, meaning that we have to buy energy from around the world, and that means it's expensive. So I think from this kind of perspective, the Japanese environment and companies were forced to work a lot in saving energy because it's too expensive and it would you know, uh, affect our profit levels. So there, I think there's a lot of good things to learn from the Japanese. Mitsubishi Electric is also well known for its environmental efforts. We received from CDP an A-list ranking for climate change and water security, so I'd like to share our knowledge on how we can save the environment to you today. The three R's of sustainability. I think you see this mark on your pet bottle, are basically reduce it, reuse it, and recycle it. It's a little different for the corporate world. It's, in, in the case of the energy, you use it, you reduce it, or you have to pay for it. It's a very important thing to know. I mean, you can use all the energy you want, but at the end, there's no running away. You're going to have to pay for it. And that's why reducing energy is very important. Reducing energy means reducing money. In the future, energy costs are going to rise. It's astonishing to see from 2002 to 2016, the cost of energy has raised from home electricity over 50% and industrial use over 40%. And this is not even Japan. We're talking about energy costs in the USA. It's only going to get more expensive. As you know, there's going to be less natural resources in the world, so expect these costs to even go higher in the future. We say energy saving is JIT, just in time. And I think this is a well-run, well-known world from Toyota in production, meaning you want to deliver parts in the right time the right amount to the right place. And that's how you reduce your waste, reduce your muda. You can say the same thing about using energy in your factory. You want to reduce where you're using your lights. If there's nobody there, you should turn off the lights. Air conditioning. If there's nobody working there, you should turn off the air conditioning. And you should also be aware of the amount of energy you're using. For instance, you know, the air conditioning temperature. If everybody's happy with 25 degrees Celsius, then keep it 25 degrees Celsius. If you put it down to 24, you're going to waste extra money. So just providing energy to the right place, at the right timing, to the right amount, is a way to save energy. I'm going to talk about energy and manufacturing. In this slide, it says what goes up and down, and we have a seesaw over here. What I wanted to explain using this is actually productivity and energy work together, meaning 
If your productivity goes up, your energy costs go down. Let me give you a brief example. Let's say you make 100 pointers a day. It takes one, a whole day to make 100 pointers. Imagine if you reduce your lead times and are able to make 100 pointers in half a day. This means that with really rough, rough calculations, you can save more than half, ener half of the energy. It's because, you know, half, if, if it's a half a day, you don't have to use in the afternoon the lighting costs, the equipment costs, and the air conditioning costs for the workers. You're saving it because the fact you're producing faster. That's why one of the shortcuts to saving energy is raising your productivity. If you're able to make products faster, then your energy is going to be saved. We say productivity and energy are JIT mirrors, meaning that if your OE goes up, if your machines don't stop and are running all the time, you'll make your products faster, meaning you'll save more energy. If your planning is good, also if your quality is good, then you will produce the parts that you want in less time. You know, if you have five parts that are NG, not good, and you can reduce to one, you're going to save the time for those four parts production, and you're going to save energy. So always focus on productivity when you, if you want to save energy. In order to do this in Mitsubishi Electric, we use this KPI which we called Energy Per Unit Produced, EPU. What this is, is we're monitoring the amount of energy needed to be used to manufacture a single unit of production. So I have one pointer, and this is the cost of energy to make this pointer. So it's, the top part is energy consumption rate, the kilowatts, and the bottom part is the production units. This is good to tag in productivity because it means if you raise your production, then the CPU rate will go down, meaning you're saving more energy. Also, if you can reduce the total amount of energy consumption you are doing, this is also saving energy. So, at the end, you can really monitor how much energy you're using. A lot of people, of course, are monitoring your costs in manufacturing. You know the material costs, you know the direct labor, you know the indirect labor, and you know the logistics cost. But us at Mitsubishi Electric, we're also monitoring the energy costs because we feel that this is going to be very, very crucial in the future. And if we can reduce this, we're going to be able to lower our total manufacturing costs. I want to go through some examples of how we saved energy. First, talking about circuit breaker production line in Fukuyama that we had. Energy saving, you can't do it with magic. You just can't say, I put in a system and I saved it. It's a step-by-step -step process that you have to work on every day of your life. You first set your management goals. How much energy do we want to reduce? Then everybody takes responsibility. The president, the factory manager, the line leaders, the line workers, everybody has to commit to saving energy. And the process is very simple. You visualize the energy, find out where you're using the energy or waste energy, and then you act on it. You reduce that energy. And this is the only way you're going to be able to save energy. So it's not rocket science. When we started energy saving, everything starts with monitoring, as I said, visualization. So we went to our factories and put you know, IoT systems to collect the energy we're using in each factory. Problem is, if you look at the chart over here and see the energy we're using, you can't find anything. You, know, you can't do Kaizen activities because you just know how much energy you're using. It's like, so what? 
That's why drilling into the detail of where you're using energy is very important. You have to look at each production line, which production line is using the most energy. You have to look at each machine, which machine is using the most energy, and when it is using excessive energy. Maybe there's a facility loss, a breakdown, or you know, the operation is not working well. Then you finally can drill in and sol start solving the problem. But in order to do that, you need more information. Go into detail, okay, why did the machine stop? Or what was the re how long did it stop? What was the reason it stopped? If you don't find the key cause of your energy losses, you're not going to be able to fix it. And that's why drilling into detail is very, very important. Here's a next second case that we did in our Nagoya factory, and it involves our print circuit board production lines. As I said, linking production data, production efficiency data, with saving energy data is very, very important. So in this case, we are monitoring the production data, the equipment data, the quality data, and error data, collecting them through an edge computer, and then combining with this energy data. Here was the analytics result, but it's same as the whole factory. You can see basically flat lines everywhere, constant energy uses. This is where why and when KPI EPU, energy per production unit, becomes very, very interesting because immediately you see a different picture. Oh, I'm using a lot of energy in the morning. And the reason is because we're setting, you know, that we're starting up the machine, putting power onto the machine too early. The production line starts 8.30, but actually the power is on 7.45, meaning that there's 45 minutes of waste. If you know that, then you can improve. You can say, okay, let's start the machine at 8.25, and then we can save those 40 minutes of idle time. Oh, we're losing a lot of energy when we have shortage of material. Now you know we are, we're not providing material to the um, machines in an efficient manner, so let's find a way to fix that. Or there was a equipment trouble over here, but there was no maintenance staff. So you have to think about how you're going to rotate your maintenance staff so they can quickly fix a problem when it arises. And only this kind of information comes out if you're tagging in production with your energy usage. So that's why collecting these energy production data together is very, very important. One also interesting thing about this PC print circuit board line was we found out that, okay, the oven is the part we use the most energy. Over 70% of the energy of this production line is with the oven. It's because it generates heat, so it needs a lot of energy. So how can we improve the energy utilization with the oven? It's actually pretty difficult because you can't just stop an oven. It has to have a certain temperature for production and melting the soldering, meaning you have to keep it running. There's no just throwing off the power switch. That means the best way to utilize and save energy is to keep the oven as busy as possible. In the past, we found out that the, there was a lot of idle time for this oven. You see the green parts, the green parts are where we're doing production. The white parts are when we're doing changing of changeovers. And you see there's a lot of white parts over here. We thought, in order to keep the busy, the machine busy, we need to do our changeovers of products and deliver the parts to the oven more efficiently. So we set up a special worker, a picker and deliverer in order to make, you know, provide the parts to the oven in a timely manner. And you can see we were able to get this more greener, meaning the oven utilization is better and we're saving energy. Together, we're also, as you know, we're, more pr we're producing more parts, so our productivity went up 30% as well. 
IoT is sometimes difficult for some people, you know, they think it's too complex, but we also provide simple solutions. Like if you, when you start an energy project, you know, just first want to get a general idea of how much energy you're using in this machine or in this plant. And there's like simple, like uh, energy monitoring units that you can put on your uh, electrical panels to see how much energy you're using. And if you just take a quick look around, then you can find out where the part is you should start and dig into detail. Saying this over again, but the little things count. Um, every employee in your company has to think about reducing energy, and that's what we do at Mitsubishi Electric. Um, if you go to our stairs, we have, okay, saving it, you have to save energy because, you know, one copy paper is about one cent. So don't copy if you don't need it. Um, tap water is about $2 per square meter. So think when you're using water. So all these things are kind of encrypted, engraved in our employee's mind. Little things count. As we talked about the oven, of course, keeping it busy is very important. But we found out that actually putting a blanket over saves a lot of energy because it doesn't dispatch the air, hot air so much. So these little things help us a lot saving energy. And if you look at the office, you know, we see that putting all the lights on when nobody's, I mean, you know, when there's only a few people there is not efficient. So we put these kind of simple strings on our lights and whenever somebody goes home, they'll just take the string and cut off his lights. It's a little, little amount, but these kind of little amounts add up to a huge money. And you can see the impact that we had. We were able to, for our model print circuit board line, we were able to reduce our EPU by 62%. And as Fukuyama works as a total, we were able to um, reduce our contract peak demand by about 1,700 kilowatts, which is a total of 3.4 hectares of solar panels, which is basically a baseball stadium. So this is just a summary. Um, always think about production and saving energy as a set. If you raise production, you're going to be able to save energy. Um, use EPU, it's a very efficient KPI that we're using over here. And at the end, it's responsibility and the little things, visualizing, collecting, and Kaizen activities. Fortunately, we were given an award uh, for our energy uh, conversation activities, so I think we can show you a lot. And you're always welcome to our model e-factories where we implement these energy saving solutions for real. We actually have about more than 10,000 uh, customers visit to learn how you can save energy and save the earth. I hope that was interesting for you and thank you very much. See you again.